All right, so let's get to work on the next test case for MP1. Now, if you get here, please get to the point where you actually have finished the previous one. There are some dependencies in our test cases. So for example, you know, we, we do want you to work in order. So I've got a working uh, comparator for the restaurant name, which I've hidden here, so you can't see it. Um, but what we wanna do is we wanna look at the next test for MP1. And what we're gonna do in this video is actually we're gonna do some, some preparation work for that test. Uh, because if you look at the test suite, we've actually given you an ungraded test that I suggest that you use to make sure that you're ready to work on the search method. And I'll show you why in a second. Um, okay, so let's go ahead. We're gonna uncomment this ignore uh, annotation and we're gonna run this test. So I'm gonna run, this is an ungraded test, but it's gonna help us prepare to make sure that we're ready to start working on our restaurant search method. Um, now, what is this test testing? So what this test is doing is it's making sure that we are receiving JSON from the server that has the right fields in it, okay? Remember, if we looked, we're gonna go back and look at the CSV in a minute, um, but we noticed there were four fields in the CSV. So let's open up the, our CSV file. Uh, there are four fields in each record in our CSV. There's an ID, which is this unique string. There's the name of the restaurant, a cuisine, and the restaurant website. And all four of those fields should be in the JSON that the server is sending us, but they're not. There are a few fields that are missing. And so let's see what fields are there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to the place where uh, load restaurants gets called. Uh, that's right here. And I'll put an init block here and I'll do a, just a println restaurants JSON. So we can see what we got, right? We can see what's in here. This is the string that's gonna be sent to the client, which is the, the test case is using a client to pull this data directly from the server. Um, and so let's see what's in here, right? We wanna see what, what fields are present and what ones are missing. Um, and you'll notice that I see two fields. I see the ID and the name. So where are the cuisine and the website? That's what the test case is, is uh, complaining about. So let's look. So we're gonna look at our load restaurants method. Let me uh, close this. Uh, and let's look at what's happening here. So. This I apologize for. This could have been this this could have been done a little bit better. I think um, this scanner thing is something from Java. Somehow Java shipped without a way to load a file into a string, um, and so this is the way to do this. Like if you go on Stack Overflow, this is like the magic code that does this, and I don't want to talk about it anymore. But it works. So what happens is we get the entire content of our CSV file into a string. Next, we're using a library to parse the CSV, and you might be like, wait, why? I know how to parse the CSV, just split uh, by the commas and off we go. And you might think that that would work, but it turns out that sometimes a comma occurs in places in a CSV you might not think it would, like in a field. And so this library helps us deal with that sort of thing, right? And there are ways to work around that with quotes and things like that, but it's easier in this case to just use this library to parse the, um, parse the contents. We use this with skip lines to skip the first line because it has headers. Um, and then what we do is we go through, that CSV returns an iterator. Each part in the iterator is an array of strings, right? One thing I'll point out that might be helpful for you, particularly in Kotlin. So in Java, the types are all over the place, but in Kotlin, sometimes because we're using type inference, we might not even know what the type of a variable is. So if I uh, select this and hit F1, you'll see that uh, Android Studio knows that this is an array of strings. And so really this array of out string, whatever, but you can think of this as an array of strings. Um, so that's helpful sometimes if, if you're curious about a variable, like what is this, right? All right, so now let's talk a little bit about what's going on here. Um, so this syntax here, you know, I could have done this in a little bit of a, 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 a different way. Um, but what apply does is apply takes an object and it runs the code inside this block as if it's being called with the object, you know, as, a, as an argument. So, so let me show the, I'll show you the other way of doing this, right? Um, so instead of using apply, what I could also do is restaurant dot put, um, and then I could, could use the same thing, right? And this apply syntax is just this kind of sort of Kotlin-esque, Sometimes they call this syntactic sugar, right? Um, and, and if you want to rewrite it to make it look, I, maybe I should have taken this out. I kind of sometimes like to you know, show off some of the cool features of Colin or things that I find. And actually, this is just honestly how I would have done it. So I might have just forgotten and left this little bit of 
um, of, of, of fun in the code. But you can certainly write this differently. You can certainly just write it, uh, you know, like I'm going to create a new JSON object and then I'm going to do restaurant uh, dot put, you know, ID, whatever, right? Uh, but what I'm doing in here is I'm going through the file line by line and for each line, I'm creating a new JSON node using Jackson and I'm populating the node with a few fields. And what you might notice here is that there's only two fields here. There's ID and name. And that's the reason that my JSON string only has those fields because I only put those fields there. So what else is in this CSV that I need to, to incorporate? There's a cuisine and there's a website. Now, if I look at the test case, the test case expects the website to be in a field called URL, right? So I've got to keep that in mind. Um, so let's do that. So I'm going to add two things here. I'm going to add a field called cuisine and I'm going to have that be parts two. And then I'm going to have add a field called URL and I'll have that be parts three. Okay, cool. Uh, let's try running this test case and see if it works now, right? Now that I'm parsing all the information from that CSV into my JSON array, um, this test case should pass, right? And you'll see it, it, it printed off here that I, and I can see in the printed output, which I'll remove in a second, that I have all four fields, right? Um, and this is important, right? So I'm not sure if we're gonna use the URL or not uh, throughout the rest of the MP, we'll, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, we're definitely gonna use that ID later on in the project. And you also need the cuisine value, which you didn't have before. Um, now, let me show you uh, another piece of the puzzle here. I'm gonna save this. Uh, I'm going to go over to models.kt um, and you'll see here that my restaurant model, so when the JSON string gets to the client, we're going to use Jackson to deserialize it into a list of restaurant objects. Now the restaurant object right now has a property name and a property cuisine. It does not have a property ID or a property um, blah, 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 what's the word? URL, right? And we might need to add those in the future. You'll probably definitely need to add the ID at some point. You don't need to add it for this checkpoint, um, but we may need to in the future, right? Um, and so just keep that in mind, a little place. So the idea is that Jackson will take the JSON and any field that it finds in the JSON that matches a property on my class, it'll load the data into that property, right? And so if I wanted, for example, if I wanted to uh, add an ID. If I added an ID property here, Jackson would load the ID data into that property form. It's pretty cool. Right? Jackson is a neat library. Okay, but we are done with this helper test method and we are ready to work on our search, uh, restaurant search function.